up everybody it's your girl Portia Marie the CEO of the PM firm and the curator of Dope People Meet make sure you follow us on Instagram at Dope People Meet the PM firm and Portia Marie P-O-R-C-H-I-A-M-A-R-I-E and we out the progress report all right, what's going on? It's your girl Lala Shepard checking in. This is a progress report. Boss Brit the most lit. What's up? It's your girl DJ Excel. Yeah, we got our first guest. What's popping, y'all? It's your girl Portia Marie in the building. Hey, okay, okay. Oh, what's going on, Portia? Portia Marie. Shit. Getting ready for 2019. <laughs> oh, we super ready. About to turn up. Shit. Yeah. You know, right. travel the world a little bit more this year. I know that's right. That sounds good. That sounds like sounds a plan. Great. That's mm-hmm. one of my goals too. Right. Everybody's definitely, man. So let the world know. What do you do? Okay. To sum it up, I will say entertainment marketing, brand curator, event curator. We do it all at the PM firm. Dope people meet. You know, curating dope shit in the city, always and forever. Okay. Always and forever. Ow. Where you from? I am. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, but I was raised in West Memphis, Arkansas. So if you ask me where I'm from, I'm from Arkansas or Arkansas. Have you want to word it? Oh Arkansas. So what's, what's going on in Arkansas? Girl, nothing. Bill Clinton. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> I fuck with Bill. I love Bill. Bill. That's a real nigga. And we thought that was going to be the closest to the black president we was going to ever get. No, bro. Bill is a real nigga. I love Bill. Billy skin. Bill. Word. Bill. Nothing, girl. Definitely. Um, so so let's get the background story. How'd you get started? Like what made you get interested in uh entertainment and all that good shit? Hmm. I can be real, real on this. Be real. Be real. This is yeah. a progress support. Well, technically I was into sports and I thought I was gonna be oh. like a sports reporter and all of that type of thing. So I like started a sports and entertainment uh, website. So that's how I started. And nice. then I ended up interning at Radio One, which is now Urban One. Mm-hmm. And um, I started interning there and I got behind the scenes of radio and behind the scenes of music, period. And I was like, yo, I actually like being behind the camera instead of in front of the camera mm-hmm. because I was doing like red carpet events, celebrity interviews and things of that nature. But then when I got behind the scenes, I was like, they get paid the most and they call them the real shots. They having the most connections. So I was like, I kind of like this. So when I was interning, I actually had a, um, my intern coordinator was hating on me and the other intern <laughs> because we was in there making moves at Radio 1. Let's just keep it funky. Okay. And so, you know, she was hating on us and she tried to take away an opportunity from me. But the opportunity she put me in front of that she thought was a downgrade, mm. it ended up getting me into the industry. So what happened was... I was trying to get an interview with Ears, who's with Ear Drummers. Yeah, we yeah, with Ears. Yeah. yeah. That's the home. I was trying to get an interview with him, but his management <clears throat> wanted to meet with me. That was making me do the most for this interview. So I'm like, mm. this is a lot. So when I, I met with them like that Monday. So the show was Saturday. met with them Monday. Followed up with them on Tuesday. And they was like, yo, you're a female version of us. We want you on our media team. So then That's they was crazy. going to L.A. for BET weekend. And I'm like, shit. I never been, I wanna go, so I don't know how to ask them because I just met them, but sure. hell, I'm about to ask. So yeah. I was like, yo, can I go to BT with y'all? That's like what you're trying to do. I'm like, I'm trying to connect in the doors mm. or whatever, you know. I'm just trying to make moves and build up our connections. And I was like, okay. So it's four o'clock that Thursday morning. They sent me a flight for eight o'clock that morning. So I was in LA with ear drummers and all of that, and it was Crazy. just dope. So the finesse was I was their PR. Mind you, I didn't know shit about PR at the time. So <laughs> I'm like, ear drummers PR. So I'm rolling with it. We in radio room. So radio room, for those that don't know, it's like a big room with different radio stations that's in there. And from the top artists to the indie artists are all in the room. And so I was like moving around with ear drummers. And Day Day manager saw me. He was like, um, yeah, he was like, um, what do you do? And I was like, I'm Eardrummers PR. And he was like, yo, I would want to bring you on the team for Day Day. I manage Day Day or whatever. So I followed up with him like three weeks later. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it took him forever to like kind of give me my first task. But my first task was to pick up tickets from DJ Holiday for a show that Day Day was doing. And so from that moment, I came on as his assistant. But I ended up doing like day to day management. I ended up tour managing. Like the manager left us on tour. And let me just keep it all the way fun. He left mm-hmm. us on tour in New York, so I had to take over the tour. I'm the only girl on the tour. Yeah. So, yeah, and I from there, when I did that, I was like, I can do this myself. I can actually build an artist myself or whatever, you know. So from there, I got my LLC. Um, after we came off tour, I got my LLC so people can take me serious. And then that's how I started. So, so oh, boss. Hey, oh, Yo, wow. I, I always say boss. what's meant for you going to be for you. For sure. You can't nobody okay. stop you your blessing. Sure. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? And that's just the whole testament of no, that. Facts. I mean, in this right crazy, place, right time. Word. Yeah. And it's crazy. It's like, you know, in this business, 
people will try to throw a roadblock at you thinking it's going to mm-hmm. fuck up your, you know, whatever you're trying to do. But like you said, it, you know, it helped. You know what I'm saying? No, she, she definitely tried it. You know what I'm saying? My mentor was like, you should have told her, no, you don't want to do that. But I was like, you know what? My exact words was, God is going to work it out. Absolutely. And I was, you know, and I let people know, like, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in it. Like, Likewise. everything happens for a reason. Sure. So, you might look at it as a loss or a mistake or whatever, but it's like, no, like, something greater going to come from there. It was supposed to happen, you know? So, yeah. That's dope. Damn. Always. Impressive. Impressive. And that's dope. I, I was going to say, I, I first, I don't know how we first met. I'm not too sure. But I know you was working with Day Day, though. Yeah. I think just been in the streets. Like, hey, oh, the street. we, no, no, no. We met what? at A3C. Was it? No, no, no. South by Southwest. One Texas. Thing. Yes, it was <laughs> that. I know. It was South by Southwest. It was. Because we randomly ran into each other and then we was just networking and shit. I'm like, I like her style. you know. No, so, you okay. still like managing Day Day? So, no, I don't manage him. Or, um, it's more so of a thing now where, like, if he called me and he need me to work on, like, a project, yeah, or something. I'll come on board. Like, I just talked to him, like, what, yesterday? Yeah. So it's like he going to, like, L.A., so I'm going to be in L.A. with him, you know, like, making moves for him or whatever. But nice. it's just, like, off the love. Like, at the end of the day, no matter, like, what type of bad situation I had with management or anybody in particular, I always had a close relationship with the artist. For sure. So, you know, he always trusted me with his brand and stuff, even when things went left or whatever. So at the end of the day, I always have love and respect for him. So if he called me, I'm always going to, like, get up and go, mm. you know, Word. just off strength. Yeah. And Word. trust is everything. Is yes. Man. Okay. Facts. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So I want to talk about some advantages and disadvantages of being a female in, mm-hmm. in your position. Um. Just because, you know, I, I see a lot of advantages and also some disadvantages being a female myself. So talk about your experience. Um. The disadvantages is that being an attractive female in the industry, a lot of the times. Better know. Walk- <laughs> okay. <laughs> Walking in the room, men automatically think you like the girlfriend, or you the side piece, or you mm. like. Just some extra ass girl around just because yeah. and it's kinda like so what I do, I walk in the room and I shake I shake your hand hard as fuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll bring out my laptop. Cause that's the way that you know it's kind of like oh shit what you do now it drops right. a different conversation mm-hmm. because now it's like okay now I can get you into what I'm doing get you in my zone mm-hmm. because I didn't come here to be your girlfriend I didn't come here to be your side piece I didn't come here to do none of that right. you know what I'm saying so it's like it's just hard trying to get men to only conduct business and leave the pleasure alone because I don't need you trying to take me on a date and forget you owe me a check like okay. <laughs> period so it's just like. I ain't for that all. I heard somebody else say that too, though. I'm dead business. ass. Yeah. Like, I don't play by my coin. I'm Miss Business and Pleasure. We keep it straight business. True. Unless I met you on some personal. Absolutely. And then we decided to do big. Do business together, then you know I'm cool with it. But if I met you on business, let's just stay in that lane because I feel like we like navigate somewhere else. It gets too confusing, gets complex, and it's just some shit I ain't trying to deal with. So yeah, but I mean the advantage is I mean it allows you to get in rooms quicker, but at the same time they don't mean it's easy Mm. having those conversations or getting those conversations or whatever you know. So it's just like advantage is like okay you're attractive, but the thing about it is you have to know what you're talking about, and I think people. Respect it a lot more than anything, and they actually can like go back and backtrack, and you know, pull out your record book. I'm like, oh, she did this, she did that. She know this person, that person know her. Oh, she, we got a good reference from this person. So mm-hmm. I think it helps when other people know you, and then it's like people can vouch for you and say, okay, look, I've seen her work. This is what she do, and I know she's good for you know whatever the task may be. Mm-hmm. So that's the advantage. It's like you have to come with more than just looks. Though you got to come with like the package of knowing what the fuck you're talking about mm-hmm. at the end of the day. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, talk about some double standards. That kind of relate to what we just, you know, spoke about. But it's definitely some double standards. Matter of fact, okay. Uh, one of the homies in the industry, his name is Gambino. He I made a Gambino. funny post. He made a funny post yesterday. He pretty much said that um, a female can have hella bros and hella homies, but a dude can't if he's talking to a girl, which is definitely true. So you know, talk about some double oh. standards. You know, it's funny. Um, even the guy I talk to, you know, it's, it has to be an understood thing. Like, I grew up with brothers, so I'm normally always the only female in the room. Mm-hmm. And it don't bother me. Like, a lot of times people, they look at me as the little sister. Like, I bring the girls in the room. You get what I'm saying? Like, they don't, like, call up some of your girls. Like, I'm never, like, the girl that they even trying to hit on anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you have to find a man that has, like, um, security within himself mm-hmm. um, to know that, like, you know, I'm only here to work. 
You know, you it's it's hard. It's really Absolutely. hard because I literally like my homeboy told me the other day. He's like, "You sure got a whole lot of brothers." I was like, "Hey, <laughs> at the end of the day, if I call him yeah, my brother, just nah, know I ain't cause y'all be yeah. slick." We do be slick, but listen, if I if and I homeboy don't call that your brother, that's, that's your brother, brother. I <laughs> that's my bro. That's my bro. Well, this is the trick. This is the trick. This is what I do. If this somebody the trick. That I this deal the with, I'm gonna say that's my friend. Oh, okay. If it's somebody I don't, that's, that's my, my brother. Bro. That's my homeboy. <laughs> Damn, true, you know. True, so true, you just true. gotta know how gotta to finesse it. Finesse it without okay. lying. Okay. I think it's hard for dudes to be okay <laughs> with that lying. because dudes know how thirsty dudes are. Yeah, true. Dudes yeah. are so thirsty. Like if you walk around in the mall, you got to really look straight because <laughs> to any dude you pass really say some like, shit. Right. And, and you and like. Do you think you ever gonna get a girl say some shit? And they don't care if you with somebody, bro. Bruh. Like, damn. They don't even care if you with somebody, man. No, they, they, really they, they disrespectful. Yeah. Disrespectful. Sometimes really disrespectful. It's hard for me when I'm with I my believe be like, bro. But it's hard. Like me, it's kinda like well, I guess when you know yourself, it's kinda like, you know, True. I know I'm not gonna do nothing but with dudes. They just be a little wishy washy. You can mm. never tell if they like that's really the home girl or whatever because that I That is true. I don't like a dude with a lot of female friends. I'm not with it. Right, I that's don't, what we say. I don't like it, even though I have like double standards. Right? There we go. They go standards. with the double standards right there. Because these girls be more than best friends out here. No, that's they be true. they be trying to excel in between, and I ain't with it. Because I had a bad experience you. with my ex, my ex boyfriend with that, so I ain't with it. So that's fair. Know. That's Anyways. fair. It's hard. And I was gonna ask you next about your love life because I know balancing relations and, and working. I don't know <laughs> we get a minute for sure. But how do you how do you do that? If you um, do that, don't talk to nobody in the city. <laughs> Damn. That part. Damn, yeah. Long it distance. Works. How do you, what, what about distance. dating an artist or do you want mm. a regular person? You tried it before. Yeah, you can say. No, 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 no. This the thing. I be around artists, so I know how they move and I know what goes on. True. Mm-hmm. So I ain't trying to put myself in that situation. Yeah. Big you facts. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say that it's not going to happen, but I rather not. Mm-hmm. Let me just say that just because I work in the industry and I just rather keep myself away from that. Mm-hmm. You know, so like. I don't like long distance. So let me just say this. Because right now, I feel like especially 2018 was my rookie year of my company, like the growth of my company. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a relationship, people don't understand. But it can be a distraction. As much as a blessing it can be, it could be a distraction. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, I can be, like, booed up with my boo on the couch or something. I was supposed to be at an event or something. And then you don't want to go because you're so comfortable on the couch with him. And you missing out on stuff because you just in their comfort zone. So me, it's easier right now to date out of the city and to be able to travel to him whenever because of the simple fact I can stay focused. I get it. And you know, I I love hard. So it's kinda like I know me. I know myself. So right now it's good for me not to be like <laughs> close by. What's your sign? I'm oh. a Taurus. Okay. I was I should have guess guessed it. it. We should have I'm guessed good it. at guessing signs, but I would have well, never said Taurus. Yeah, we, we, we I was gonna say Virgo. Uh, what's the word? Psychotic, right? Psychotic. Yeah. It's crazy. Psychotic means psychic. psychic. No, psychotic. You're psychotic. No, you're psychotic. You're right. You got it right the first time, sis. So I want to ask you, like, so how how do you work on this trust with you not being where your partner is at? Look at her trying to learn. Because I, uh, I can't do long distance. True. Well, I don't know. It's it's a thing. I mean, it's got to be a certain type of connection. You know, the mm. man got to make you feel some type of way. At the end of the day, not to say. Well, let me say this. I don't try to go in thinking negatively about things like, oh, he out here messing around with other girls or doing mm-hmm. this and that. I try not to, like, put my focus there because, you know, your focus there, you start stressing, you start worrying about the wrong thing, and then you, like, off task, off focus on what you got going on mm-hmm. in, your, you know, your own personal life or business. And so it's kind of like you got to know your partner. And he got to make you feel secure in the relationship in order for you to, like, trust the situation at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And I ain't going to say it's easy because it's not easy yeah you know what i'm saying like it's not easy at all it's by far easy but <laughs> um right now it's worth it for me just because of my career mm-hmm. and i like to travel so take me out of the city for a minute you know sometimes i need to get away from Atlanta because it'd be too much going on yeah i feel like i'd be too accessible when people know i'm in the city so when i'm away i'm away and i'd be like ghost you yeah. know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. for me I don't know. You just got to have a certain... And first of all, you got to um, 
have some type of confidence within yourself too to not be worried about somebody else. Yeah. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I'm never worried about the next female. At okay. the end of the day, mm-hmm. you would never compare to me. I don't care what she do. I don't care who she is. Okay. You know, at the end of the day. So okay. you got to have that confidence within yourself to True. know like, okay, I'm confident in who I am. I'm confident in my partner and who he is and trusting that he ain't going to step out or whatever the case might be. Cool. So Ladies at, take notes. When you start looking at people like that's your loss, then you good. <laughs> nah, <laughs> man. Look at Lala. It took it took a lot to get there, secure. but now nah, yeah. that's real. But, um, I'll go ahead, my bad. Go ahead. Now, <clears throat> I was just gonna ask. Um, so so what's some of your goals? You know, for 2019 and beyond. Um, 2019 um, is to expand my company in LA and New York. First LA. Um, nice. You know, I feel like the first seven months. Uh, the PM firm, adult people meet. Well, it's not the first seven months of the PM firm. We've been established since 2016, but adult people meet. Um, we started, I started this in June. So it came from in May on my birthday, the day after on the 4th. I'm like, dang, I'm 26. I'm getting old. I'm close to 30. And I feel like I've been busy doing a lot of everything but nothing. And I feel mm. like I hadn't really found my purpose until this year. Mm. And I asked God to show me the way. Mm-hmm. And literally, um, you know, my mentor, Jason Reddick, you know, okay. I came to him. Yeah. Okay. I came to him really initially with like a showcase idea. And he just thought my whole idea was stupid or whatever. And he <laughs> made me mad as hell. Like, I was real offended. But I mm-hmm. left. I got in my car because when I'm in my car, I get real creative. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, maybe I can do a mixer. And then I came up with Dope People Meet. Mm-hmm. And so um, we did the first Dope People Meet mixer at ASCAP. And then it has just grown so much since. Like, you know, um, and I just feel like, you know, nobody has successfully taken a brand from Atlanta to, like, L.A. or New York or anywhere else and made it really pop. Mm. So I feel like I have the opportunity to do that. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, L.A. is hard to get into that market. But I don't have no fear. Everybody know that. I moved here on faith. I don't have no fear. Like, I'm going to go to L.A. fearless again mm. and just try to take my brand out there just to expand a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. So that's like my main thing. And then I'm trying to get my team from working their nine to fives. Like okay. I have a dope ass team and if I can take them away from working their nine to fives, that will really like, you know, mm-hmm. mean so much to me. Sure. And then in the process of, you know, building up my artist, I swear Cartier, um, building him up off the ground, you know, he's from Birmingham, Alabama. But for me to be able to bring him to Atlanta and get people to respect him and his brand and his artistry, I think it's pretty dope. Mm-hmm. So my goal for him is to get him on the um, top 100. This year, and so it's just to expand my whole company, just so you know, people can live better and do what the hell they want to do. You know, so I, f- I fuck with him. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say he did it. Aquarius show, by the way. Thank you. Know, you. Yeah, yeah, the progress part. So, what's some? Um, I know it's a lot of steps, but what's some steps that you would take to to get an artist on the top 100? Like that's not a little goal. I know. So, what's like some things that are like outside the box? Are you not trying to share your secrets? I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna it. share the the <laughs> stuff that's <laughs> coming up, but if you go backtrack what I've done with him in the past couple of months, mm-hmm. you know, like I had him on. I created the um, Dope People Meet Atlanta Records Showcase for A3C, the official stage. He was on that. They got some eyes on him. Um, he opened up for Jack Harlow not too long ago. That shit was dope. As I like fuck. Jack Harlow. Yeah, that show was dope. Mm-hmm. And um, he just he did some milk and cookies shows. He got a couple more like um, openers that's coming up. Like so, you think these opening shows are beneficial? No, so, I think okay. it's very beneficial uh-huh. because you're tapping into another artist like um, fan base, fan base mm-hmm. and it just kind of get people to like, oh, who is him? Because literally every time he performed. Somebody asked him, like, a couple of people come up to him, like, yo, what's your name? Where are you from? And I think that's pretty dope. Like, even the other day, we said, like, the 21 Savage event. And this 21. girl, <laughs> cool. she um came out of nowhere and was piped up. I was like, you know her? And he was like, I was like, how you know him? She was like, Instagram. Like, I follow him on Instagram. I was like, oh, shit, real yeah. fan. You know, yeah. like, she was like, really, so you know, really I thought it was dope. So it was just kind of like. I ain't gonna say what we got coming up, but you know, even yeah. the creative thing I did on Ashwood, we did um, stupid crazy Ashwood takeover. We went on Ashwood and did a whole parade, mm-hmm. and you know, guerrilla style. Yeah. You know, I just went on there. Police, they passed by us twice. They didn't say shit. We did our thing and kept it moving. But that got some more eyes on him. It yeah. got an email in my inbox. So at okay. the end of the day, it's so uh, opening up for artists, you suggest what about open mics? Okay, let me tell you how to do it. This is the reason why so many people have asked me about doing the showcase thing. And when I do it, it got to be right and it got to make sense because a lot of people in Atlanta do showcases and no no shade to anybody that has a showcase going on because I supported many of them. But 
I don't like when you are at a showcase and artists are performing in front of other artists. That is not beneficial to the artists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, y'all charging them like $300, $400. Mm-hmm. And then all they have is a flyer to show the next day that they performed at your venue, but you ain't provide nothing else no, for them clip. after that. Mm-hmm. Like, you ain't provide nothing. Like, what, what service do you have to offer them at the end of the day? Like, you didn't put them in front of no music as that. You didn't give them no other booking. You didn't, you didn't do nothing. You didn't give them an interview on the radio station or whatever. I just yeah. feel like a lot of them are a waste of time. So anytime somebody like try to come with the whole payola thing, like oh pay to play, I ain't with it. Yeah. You know, just being honest, I just don't be with it just because I have to know for a fact that my artist is going to benefit from this showcase in particular. So I'm not going to say don't do them because you are tapping into another fan base in a sense, mm-hmm. but it's not you're not really if it's not a crowd and it's just other artists. Right. Mm-hmm. I did hear Day Day say that's how he came up through a lot of open mics, but I do agree with what you're saying too because a lot of times. You go and it's all artists Thanks. where they not they just waiting till they time to perform. It's cool for networking, maybe to network with right. artists and stuff like that, but um it might not be as beneficial like you said. It is cool. I'm not gonna say it's not super beneficial because you can have a music exec in the room possibly that will be like, Yo, I think this artist is dope and they can connect the dots elsewhere, which is what happened to Day Day, really with Day Day. His DJ has started playing his record and the security guard got Day Day to who was his old manager you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so the security guards what got him there you really never know. Never you never know, know who in the room yeah. so it's so i want to say like they're not beneficial all the way i yeah. just don't like a lot of them that are held in atlanta because i just don't feel like artists really benefit from them mm-hmm. true 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 um well portia man we got one more question for you man um how would you define the word progress? Because um, our show is just about getting better, not that good shit. And we love what you're doing, and we see that you progressing. So how would you define the word? Um, progress to me, I always tell people, I ain't never competing. Like, when I do a lot of dope events, and but I never go to another person's event trying to see how I can be better than their event. I'm always trying to be better than my last event and the person I was yesterday. So to me, it's always competing with yourself and being better than the you you were yesterday, being better than the last event, the last whatever you did, just being better than that. I think that's like true progress, if you ask me. Okay. Dope. Damn, well, we appreciate you coming through the progress support. And Thank you for we having hope it's me. not the last time. Yeah, right. She wore the business blazer. All right. I'm going to so real quick. Okay. Okay. I, I'm the Let's get it. That's what's up, man. The progress support. Good interview.